This app from the App Store is making over $50,000 every month, and I copied the entire app without having to write one single line of code. Now, what if I told you that you too could build your own profitable app in just a few hours using AI? And to prove it, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. I created an AI-powered study app that's essentially a legal clone of Gizmo AI flashcards. I replicated all of their features, I connected it to Stripe even to receive money right away, and I did all of that just using one AI coding tool. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through that entire process. First, I'll reveal how I legally replicated Gizmo's proven design and features, and then next I'll also demonstrate the one AI tool that did all the coding for me. And finally, I'll show you how I set up Stripe integration to monetize the app from the start. Now I've never seen anyone else show the complete process from start to finish building a profitable app with AI here on YouTube. So this video, thank you for clicking on it, is the only guide you're gonna need to get started. Let's go. The AI tool that we're going to use today is Replit. Now with my code, Mikey, you will get a 10% discount and full access to the Replit agent. I added the link in the description box below, so please do go ahead and help me out and click on it and use that discount code. Now, all right, before we get into any of these smart AI features, the app needs a foundation to build upon. And that starts with something simple but crucial, a login system. So instead of having to build it manually, we're going to guide Replit AI to do it for us step by step. So here, I'm going to type the first prompt build an AI powered study app for mobile applications. I'll provide the features. So first, let's start with the login page. Replit holds back a bit waiting for a little bit more direction and that's totally okay. We don't need to overwhelm it up front. So I'll follow up the prompt with go ahead and proceed with the first feature first and create the login page. Once I check the build the initial prototype box and hit approve plan and start, Replit spins up a clean login screen. Basically feels a nice layout, exactly what we need, except one thing. When I try to click in the username field, it doesn't let me type anything. So I'll prompt next. I still can't type on the username bar and also add a database for it. Now that will get things fixed pretty quickly. And now the field works and the login system is connected to a backend. Now I test creating an account, but it throws another error. So I'll let Replit know. I tried creating an account and this error occurred. We'll go ahead and insert the error code. And after that, the whole flow clicks into place. Our users can now sign up, they can log in and their data gets stored properly. But also there's something that doesn't belong here. Replit added a preview of all the app's features directly on the login page. Uh, that's not ideal. So I'll go ahead and tell it, great, the login page is all done now. Although the overview of the features should not be in the login page, so create a landing page and put all that stuff in there. Replit moves the content to a separate landing page and now things look a lot more polished. So what I'm gonna do is I'll log out, I'll log back in, and everything will flow cleanly. So now we've got the essentials, a functional login system, a proper landing page, and a solid start for what's about to become a fully AI-powered study app. Okay, so we're inside our app now, and this is where things start getting a bit more interesting. We've got our login and landing pages working perfectly, great. Now it's time to build out the actual study features, starting with the dashboard. If you click the go to dashboard button, nothing happens. Yikes, it is a dead button and we don't want that. So we'll fix that first by prompting the go to dashboard button is not working. Please fix it. And once it is fixed and it is working, we'll head over to the create study sets menu to test out the flashcards. And right away, there's an error popping up. So just type, I tried using the flashcards feature and this error occurred heard and we'll copy and paste and insert the error code here. Replit will take care of it and now the flashcard generator starts responding as it should. You can try generating a few sample cards. The AI handles the content generation pretty smoothly. However, saving 
item that part still broken so let's fix that too with the study sets that i created were not being saved now saving should work like it should you can build a flashcard set generate the content and then store it for later to test it out open one of these save sets and try answering a flashcard yeah another bug shows up so again we'll just go back ahead and simply prompt i tried to answer on my save flashcard and this error a code again copy insert paste code once that's resolved answering flashcard starts working the way we want it to exactly how it ought to in the app now everything's finally connected create save and study so the core cycle the core content is in place and by the way it's good to mention that replit allows you to build unlimited apps and actually deploy them to the public so make sure to check out the link in the description box below just click on that with my special code as well remember that for a discount mikey so now at this point the app is doing its job basic flashcards are live and functional but you know let's be real it still feels and looks like a rough draft so the goal here is to transform it from a simple tool into a proper study companion something flexible smart and actually enjoyable to use to start building that next layer i'll type now add these particular features and here's what i'm asking for first up customizable decks and better organization being able to group flashcards by topic or subject makes everything way more manageable nobody wants all their content dumped into one giant unorganized pile then it's time for rich content support right now as you can see it's just plain text and not everyone learns the same way especially with just plain text some people like myself need visuals others might benefit from bolded key terms, bulleted points, or even code snippets. Giving users, our users, that kind of control does make the app way more versatile. Now, the last big one here is progress tracking and analytics. Having data on what you've studied, how often you've studied, and what you're still struggling with adds real value. And it turns the app into more than just a digital notepad. It becomes a sort of feedback loop that helps you learn smart smarter. And then once those are added, I just don't want them buried deep in the interface. They should be visible right away. So we'll go ahead and prompt in, add these features on the landing page and make it more visually appealing for the users to show what kind of features our study AI app has. That refreshes our landing page with a cleaner layout, as you can see, and a clearer breakdown of what the app actually offers. And it feels like something Thing you'd actually want to sign up for, not just something you happen to stumble upon. And for our next stop, the progress menu. I press the progress button and it resulted in a 404 page not found. And then once that's handled by the Replit AI agent, another thing also stands out because there's no easy way to jump back to the landing page from the dashboard. That's an easy miss and also an easy solution. So again, I'll just prompt create a button on dashboard page that will redirect users to the landing page. All right, so that's definitely much better. Cleaner navigation just makes everything feel more polished. Over in the flashcard section, there's another small problem because answering a card right now just means we're typing into a blank field. That's totally not ideal, especially for people like myself or maybe you who prefer more of a guided format. Easy solution though, because I'm just going to prompt, make the answer multiple choices or a true or false method for our users to understand. Now that makes the flashcard experience instantly more interactive and digestible. After running through a full flashcard set, I'm going to jump back into the progress tab and sadly nothing showing, no data. So again, simple, one more prompt. I finished one of the flashcards that I created, but it didn't show the progress analytics. Here, Replit will get that sorted out and the analytics start updating in real time. You can finally see which cards you finished, how many were actually correct, and how close you are to completing a set. And at this point, the app isn't just usable, it actually feels pretty solid. The experience is smoother, the features are smarter, and it is starting to look and behave like something you'd want to use consistently day in and day out. Great, because things are starting to feel solid, but there is still a little bit more room to polish. At this stage, it's all about tightening up the experience, refining what's 
already working and then enhancing the features that need a little bit more depth. To get started, we'll prompt the mobile AI study app should contain the following. That opens the door to feed in the features we want to upgrade or to fix. So first up, flash card generation. It needs to be able to handle multiple content types. And I'm talking about text, PDFs, links, and images. So here I'm going to type create flash cards from text, PDFs, links, or images, automatic extraction of key concepts and conversion to a Q&A format. Since this uses OpenAI, Replit asks for an API key. I show where to get it, I plug it in, and we're good to go. Testing the URL based flash card generation confirms everything we've set up so far works. Five cards generate cleanly, no issues. Next is spaced repetition. I'll prompt Replit to upgrade it, test it briefly, and everything should run smoothly. So there's no need to linger here on this part. Then comes the customizable decks and organization. That gets added so our users can better group their content and at the same time also keep organized. But while saving a new flashcard, I noticed something a little weird because it redirects the landing page instead of going back to the dashboard. But that's an easy fix. So we'll prompt after saving flashcards, it redirects to the landing page instead of the dashboard. Please fix it. And that should get everything sorted out. Then there's a see all button on the dashboard too that really doesn't do anything. So we'll fix that with a prompt, make the see all button on the dashboard function properly. Now it works and it redirects to the folder section like it should. Over in the study sets, progress indicators aren't updating. Everything still says not studied yet, even after we actually have. So I'm gonna prompt to fix this. The progress indicator on study sets isn't updating after studying, please fix it. Again, that will get it patched up and we're good to go. And while at it, I'll also ask for the option to edit or delete a study set. Simple, but honestly also essential. The flashcard choices still feel a little too easy too. So to improve that, I'll tell Replit to make them more challenging and better thought out. Next, it's time to expand rich content support. I want our users to be able to add images, audio, PDFs, even formulas, and then create multi-sided flashcards for layered learning. After the update, you'll see that our testing confirms it all works. Our users can now upload files, switch between sides, and build deeper, more dynamic cards. Next is progress tracking and analytics. This should include session history, most used decks, and stats on our strengths and weaknesses. I'll check the progress menu. In Replit adds session counts, top decks, and a clean progress bar showing card completion. Pretty solid, good stuff. Now, I tried opening the account settings and nothing works. So to fix that, again, I'm just gonna prompt with fix and activate the account settings functionality. And that gets activated. Now our users can edit their profile info and manage their settings properly. One last thing, I'm gonna go ahead and test by uploading a PDF to generate flashcards. And when we do that here, you can see it throws us an error. We can try a different way this time by taking a screenshot of it and then sending it over to Replit. And if this is still broken, I'll just simply send another screenshot just to be sure. It's just one of those bugs that needs a second push. No biggie, Replit will eventually figure it out. Now with all of the core features in place in our app, it's the perfect moment to introduce monetization because that's why we're here, right? The app should stay accessible, free for anyone to explore and use at a basic level, but unlocking premium features needs to feel seamless and professional. And for that, a Stripe powered paywall is the cleanest way to make that happen. So to get the ball rolling on that for monetization, Replit will begin the Stripe integration process and will ask us for two keys, the secret key and the public key, both of which are easy to find inside your Stripe dashboard under developer, then under API keys. Now, once those are copied over and dropped into Replit, the payment system setup is ready to go. At this point, it makes sense to include a small UX improvement, something visual that shows whether or not a 
user has an active subscription. A quick prompt to Replit does the trick. So we'll type in, create an indicator or a button on the dashboard page so users can see if they're subscribed or not. So that way there's no confusion. It's immediately clear whether premium features are accessible or someone is still locked behind the paywall. Testing the full subscribe flow reveals a few hiccups along the way too. Some errors show up during checkout. Screenshots, again, like we did last time, will help pinpoint the issues and Replit works works through them fairly quickly. And once everything's patched up, the entire flow is smooth. And from the user's side, it's also pretty simple. Tap subscribe, enter their payment details, whether it's a credit card or another supported method. And once confirmed, full access is now instantly unlocked. There are no weird redirects, no clunky friction, just a clean, secure Stripe integration fully embedded into the app's user experience. It feels very polished and more importantly, it works. And that's where we're at, a complete AI-driven study app built from the ground up, feature by feature, all without having to touch a single line of code. We've got smart flashcards, progress tracking, media support, and even a working fully functional payment system. And the crazy part, again, we did all of this just by talking, chatting to an AI agent. And this doesn't even have to stop here. You can tweak it, you can scale it, you can brand it, whatever you want to do. Your imagination is the limit. So this is your base to build on. I want to thank you for watching with me step by step from beginning to the end. Let me know in the comments section below if you have any questions, I'll answer them. Let me know also what you want to see next and I will see you at that next one. Thanks for watching.